Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind, so if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazylifepodcast, and, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number, or um, go to nami.org, or um, whatever resource you can find. But just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. And try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you uh, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. Way. I don't care how you're doing, what's up or how's it hanging, I'd like to buy this world one last drink. Life sucks all of the time, stick it up your sunshine, and then you'll see the clouds every day. And then you'll see the clouds every day. Then you'll see the clouds every day. Welcome to the Crazy Life, everyone. My name is Jen. I am your hostess of the evening. And with me, as always, we have Brian and Hanno. Hey, guys. Shalom. Hey. Oh, both full of energy today. Oh, no, that was it. That's all I had. (laughs) <laughs> tapped. Yeah, I almost made a very inappropriate uh, um, comment there. Yeah. Caught myself in time. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, so how are you guys doing? We kind of had a quiet week last week. Mm. Sorry, guys. We do promise we are trying to get more consistent again. She's lying. Um, We're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> We are trying. Life is just going very, very fast right now. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah. I was on co- COVID quarantine last week. Yay. Wait. So what is your excuse <laughs> for not recording, mister? Hmm? He was on, he was, he was quarantined. He wasn't allowed to be around I anyone. Was, was allowed, yeah. Even digitally. <laughs> I didn't talk to you. Yeah. Even digitally. Yep. Can't be around anyone. Nope. No. Yeah. When I isolate, I isolate. Yeah. <laughs> he just locked himself in his panic room. There's no internet in there. <laughs> That's it. Why were you on quarantine? Because I got a call on Tuesday around 11 o'clock from the, so, the someone that works at my chiropractor's office letting me know that she tested positive. Oh, no. And I was like... And so here's the crazy thing. So this was Tuesday. My appointment was the Wednesday before. Mm. And I was like, 
Okay, well, let's do a little quick research. So quick check on the internet and there, yeah, it's not easy to get good information because there's a lot of info that was from last year. Yeah. So I had to find info that included vaccinations. So it, what's funny is I finally found a website that did it like a tell your own story kind of a thing mm -hmm. Cho or choose your own adventure. God, tell your own story. Mm -hmm. um, and they even said it. We've set up this page like a choose your own adventure. So right off the bat, vaccinated, not vaccinated. So you click and then it takes, you know, uh -huh. da, 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 this and that, you know. Yeah. It was really good info. And so it finally came down to the whole like, all right, the the CDC rule or the guideline is within fi within six feet for 15 minutes. That could be five minutes, three times a day. But, you know. It, it, at that at that exposure was you were within six feet for 15 minutes and I was just like okay I was in the office for 20 I was within six feet and I'm like it's close yeah like it it's it was more than five minutes it wasn't just me walking in we usually kind of you know chat a little bit and she took measurements off of me for a for a pillow and i'm like that's direct contact yeah you know and i'm like Ugh. i was like like if i if i blow this off and something happens or if i take you know blow this off and, and schedule a test no and and i and it turns out that i knew Nothing good comes of this. So it's like walked into the office kind of a little ways away and I just said what's happened. And I'm like, I, I think I need to go home. Like, I don't, I think this is too close. And so I texted Tom, my doctor bandmate. He didn't get back to me, but by that time I'd already looked online and was like, okay, yeah. And, and so here's the interesting thing. If you're not vaccinated, and you don't have symptoms and you've been in you, some, you've had a, an exposure, someone that's positive, you want to get tested within three to five days. If you are vaccinated, you actually want to wait longer. You want to, and, and a week, they say it's, you, have, you want to wait till after three to five days. Cause I'm like, Man, that's a week ago. And finally, Tom did get back to me. He's like, actually seven days is, is like perfect for what they're saying is because for, for people that are vaccinated that have an exposure that need to get a test, it's like, yeah, wait a week. So there I am at work. I quickly, I asked uh, one of my coworkers who had to have a test. I'm like, who'd you do it with? She's like, I did it with the hospital. And I'm like, okay. So I contact the hospital. I can't get a test until Thursday. And I was like, what is going on? Well, hmm. every, all the clinics in the area have gone to, vaccinations they're not doing testing anymore oh right it's just right and there's just because yeah. there's just not that much demand and even the hospital's now doing travel travel testing which i would you know they weren't before right and it turns out that you know there's been a couple little you know you get your summer crud goes around and people have been signing up for tests so i'm like all right thursday morning Yes, yeah, so I went home on Tuesday, was home all day Wednesday, and Thursday went in for my test, and then of course I gotta wait until Friday. It's gonna take, you know, twenty four hours. Right. So luckily it was negative. Uh and I it felt good to do the right thing. And then I was actually able to come like on Friday I was supposed to go up there and, and do some uh dog sitting and they were kind of reluctant and it was a good move that they didn't want to have me grab their dog because when I I did come up later and walk the dog uh, the doc was a lot older, but what's funny is I was hanging out at work and they're like, why are you here? I'm like, I haven't been around people for two and a half days. <laughs> you know, like, and, and it's hard for us to really quarantine in the house. So I, I kind of just stayed in the front room and opened all the windows mm -hmm. and had a fan just to keep air flowing through. And anytime Sharon would start to hang out, I'd be like, move along. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I had all these things I needed to, you know, the, I had lots of things I could do around the house. You know, like there's, I have car stuff to work on and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, eh, time to organize the guitar pedal board. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, yep. that took two days because <laughs> <laughs> I had to cut new cords and cables, but now it's all organized. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. there you go. Um, yeah. That was, so that was, it was a interesting little, uh, 
kind of segue in life. Mm-hmm. It felt really good to do the right thing. And then uh, today, or it was yesterday, I said, so, hey, how are we handling this? You know, like, well, how are we doing this? And and Kathy's like, oh, it's it's all by whatever the federal government. I'm like, well, what are we? We're like, what is the status now? Yeah, right. You know, we had that whole Family Medical Leave Act and everything. She's like, mm-hmm. you know, there were extensions and not. And I'm like, all right, well, let's find out. So, but it's the RIFRA or whatever it is, the, I can't remember what the bill was and it was the bill that they signed in March. Uh, that one is effective from April until September. And that extended all the, so the, there's the tax rebate. Basically a company still gets tax rebates for uh, any, any employee that, that uh, quarantines oh, okay. for even for a test. Uh, Cause before it was just, it wasn't even for, it wasn't waiting for testing. So this new one, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> he's just staring at bogart barking at him yep um but the this one i mean how great is that that you know our my company pays for my staying at home and they get a tax rebate for it good because that means people will you know are able exactly. to not have to make a, a bad decision there a bad decision that's yeah. it because you want people to be honest Yep. And step up, you know, uh, this is how you encourage that. Yep. So that felt good. And then I had my regular dentist appointment on Tuesday. So Sharon and I, had, I had for, I had not forgot, I just put it off that. So we were supposed to go to Jamaica last year. And that got put off until, you know, we went this year in May. Mm. Well, I had October booked. And I'm like, I need to change October. So I finally, over the weekend, looked at how much flights would be if we changed to, because we have some friends going in April. And I was like, oh, cool, 2000 bucks. And then I get to the checkout part, and it's like, that's $2,000 each. What the? <laughs> like, oh, wow. okay, they're, they're making up for the air loss of air money. Whew. Yeah, wow. So it was like, all right, let's see about Boise. And it's like, okay, that's back to normal. All right, let's see the resort. Oh, wow, that's also, you know, because yeah. we're not booking at, you know, during a, mm-hmm. a da- you know, like if we do an incentive period, we you can save money, you know, mm-hmm. you can get one night free or whatever. It's like, well, we're out on that. And I'm like, okay. If I don't, if I blow this trip off completely, I have a three hundred dollar deposit I lose, and then I have to pay another deposit again. So it's like, all right. And it turned out I had some uh, e credits with the airlines, and I'm like, I hate to do these things where it's like, by spending money, I I don't lose money. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. right. Yeah. It's I don't like doing that. Right. And but it's like because I I'm trying. I've got this implant for my tooth and I'm just trying to, to, and I'm not saying I'm being financially responsible right now because I'm not, but I'm trying to be, let's just say cognizant of what's realistic and what's not. Mm-hmm. And, and I know how important, you know, this again, for us to get out, especially at the end of winter is really huge. But I really was like, I don't think I can justify this, especially with the tooth expenses. That's like, all right, I go in for my cleaning on Tuesday. I have two broken teeth. Oh, no. Oh, wow. And I was just like, I just dropped my head. I was like, when I got to the counter, Dory's like, well, the good news is, because and I've already blown <laughs> my insurance for the year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've blown through my entire cafeteria plan for work. Sure. So if I can make it till January, it'll all get paid for. And she's like, you know, total silver linings it. Well, you know, because... You have insurance. We, you know, the, the cost of the crowns get discounted from sixteen hundred to twelve hundred each. Ooh. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. It like, is okay. Yeah. yeah, it's still, yeah. you know, still a significant kick in the butt, though. That's well, a, and because and then it wasn't until I left the office that I remember that I, I was eating some popcorn last week, oh, and yeah. I bit into a kernel that was like, okay, that hurt, yeah. and I've kind of been like feeling it, and and it's like, oh. Man, and then so the lower one, I didn't even know it happened. I guess I chipped it, I chipped it and cracked it. It's like, yeah. I, I, yeah. And so I was like, then I'm looking at this Jamaica thing. And I'm like, I finally managed to find more reasonable flights and knocked a day off. So it's only six days. And, you know, by the time we get to April, it's like, you know, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll all be okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a little bit of like a, whew, yeah, 
Yeah. And then today at work, the property manager sat me down again and started with overheard. Oh, boy. And I just said, I stopped. I'm like, and I, I, I started getting really riled up. And she's like, mm-hmm. don't get, I'm like, no, I said, I set a boundary on this. I was real specific about that. I don't want to do second hand. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is this, you know, mm-hmm. this is not fair. And yeah. it's really, it, I don't see how we make this work. If people, again, it was something that was purely operational. And she said, well, and we got into some of the details about it. It was about basically how our, our office is laid out and how it's being used. And it was like, well, you know how it does And I said, no, I don't. Well, you know how, like, when if you do, 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 she's, I'm like, no, I don't understand. Like, perhaps you can bring that person in here and we can have a conversation about it. Because you, you know, and I just. That I was told I was a hothead. And I'm like, my old boss was a hothead. He blew up over stupid stuff. Yeah. Now, do I, am I passionate and get excited about things that are I deem are important? Absolutely. But I have never yelled at anyone, belittled them. You know, if something I think is wrong, yeah, I'm passionate about it. And so she brought up this example of last week I went to go grab the set of keys I usually carry, and the master key wasn't on there. I'm like, where's the, where is this? Like, what? Why isn't this on here? Mm-hmm. And 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 she she said she used that as an example. I'm like, well, that is a if that key is lost, that's forty five thousand dollars to replace every lock on the property. Yeah. So I think if I get a little riled over that, seems kind of appropriate. I feel like everybody should get riled over that because yeah. that's a significant cost, and, right? and you so, have to go change every lock too. Yeah. It, yeah. That's it. <laughs> so when I when I got on the radio and I found out that it was you know that that one of my coworkers has, he puts it on his keychain. And I'm like, okay, that's fair enough. He's, you know, it's secure then. Yeah. It's not just being pulled off and just being used willy nilly. Right. Um, and it, and it, I just sat there and again, did my best to, okay, how do we solve this and get into a solution again? Yeah. Because that we got into the whole, you know, what I like, I really appreciate, you know, she for all intents and purposes, she's my boss. What what I appreciate about my boss is she tries to relate to me, and I and I do appreciate that. It's not in a patronizing way ever. Mm-hmm. She tries to tell me I under, you know, she expresses to me that she understands, and from her own perspective. And she brought up some great stuff. And when she does that, we usually laugh, which I appreciate a lot. I like the fact that she doesn't set herself apart from, she tries to bring herself to the same level and say, I, you know, I know what you're going through. I do this, Mm -hmm. or I'm accused of this. Right. And it's like, and, and it was good because it it gets me out of the feeling of being that I'm being persecuted because she said, no one's, no one's criticizing you. And I'm just like, well, yeah, they are (laughs) like, you're not, I'm like, uh, why can't we have a conversation about this? Yeah. Like, why can't we just talk about this? Do you know what this, like, and I know I don't have all the details, but from what you've just said, you know, the first impression I get is that there's somebody or whoever it is that she's hearing stuff from sees you as unapproachable. Yeah, oh, that, that, that's right? for sure. Is that and, what it is? How, what okay. I'm told is that that person is is rather sensitive. Okay, so they're being the media mediator essentially, so that your hot headedness doesn't offend them, for lack of a better term. And, and I have, and and I know who the person is. Yeah, I have literally, and they're not they're not going and talking out of turn. Right, they're right. Just, saying stuff out loud and she is on I believe when she says that she honestly hears other people in the office talking about something yeah. but what's happening is that somebody is venting their grievances publicly right. rather than and second hand rather than directly and what I told her I said if somebody came to me and said this I would say why don't you go talk to them yes if someone says 
hey, do you know what's going on with so-and-so? I'd say, why don't you go and talk to them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember where, I don't remember which place Jen worked, but I remember when employees had an issue like that, they would make them schedule a meeting with each other and i usually i think a manager was like involved weren't they exactly and then that was you were supposed to start there and then go but even if this person went to your manager directly or your boss whatever you know if they went to her directly and said hey blah 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 that would bother me less than just airing it to everyone that's just not professional and you know. there's no solution based there it, right. that's basically we're coming down to gossip level yes, exactly it's not this is not about employer policies this is about personalities mm-hmm. and it's a difference in doing things and at least i mean she understands why i do things there's a reason for it and part of the reason is, is a direct <laughs> result of what happened with our our, our past mm-hmm. facilities manager yeah and so it was in the end I like that her and I walk away from these in, in a, we have a solution set up what we're going to do. We've had some laughs. We've both been able to listen and express ourselves and she doesn't take stuff personally. And I really, really, I, it makes me very grateful, Yeah. but I still can't help but fe- left feeling a little disturbed because this is number two. And it's with the same person. And, and really, it should be shut down because that's what I asked her. Yeah. I said, I would appreciate that this gets shut down now. Yeah. And that we don't we don't entertain this way of communication. Right. This does not work. And I even said, I said, it's this is not an HR matter. Yeah. If it was, I absolutely that that person should be able to feel, you know, to be able to report what they need to report anonymously and should sure. be handled. Yep. Like it is not an HR manner. It is literally an operations thing. Yeah, it is. It's just how we do business. And if we can't communicate how we do this. Uh, then this whole thing is pointless. Yeah. Well, and not mm-hmm. to mention, like the concept of like you said, even though this is about uh, work or whatever, it's like. It's still, like you said, it's still gossip and no gossip should be, you know, should not, gossip should not be overheard and tolerated. You know what I mean? Like managers should be shutting that shit down. Oh, sorry. That down. <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> right that's away. I would appreciate that because if, if the, the, if she overhears two employees talking about another employee that she immediately intervenes. Yeah. So her idea was to bring it to my attention that this is being said. And I'm just like. My preference is that you shut this down immediately and deal with it directly. Well, because this really the way she's handling it could lead to an escalation of the situation because she could be coming to you saying, because think about this, right? How many times in life have we had someone come to us and go, hey, I heard so-and-so's talking about you behind your back. And then you go to that person and you're like, hey, what the heck? You know, and you're mad. This yeah. could turn into an escalated situation, and it doesn't need to be. Like yeah. you said, if she shuts it down and then says, hey, I heard this. I shut it down, but I do want to address it. Well, her, you her know? plan was to bring it up in a staff meeting. And I was like, like that's going to be better? Yeah. And I'm glad she didn't. Yeah. Because, like, it, you want to see me get defense? You think yeah. I'm defensive now? Right. <laughs> Well, especially because other people might feel like they're it's okay for them to chime in at that point too. This could turn into a bad situation. Well, yeah, you know? that's that's what that is. So, but, but the best part was when I says, "Well, you know, it sounds like one of these situations where you know one person's hothead is another person's passionate," and she loved that because yeah. it it really you know one person's freedom fighters, another person's terrorist. Yeah. It's all about perspective. Right. Well, and again, I'm like sorry. if this person went to your your boss and said, "Hey, blah 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 with Heno." I'd like to talk to him about it, but, you know, he gets kind of hot-headed, blah, blah, blah. Could you sit in on it? Yeah, or just – and that's you – know? yeah, that's that's an appropriate – but to to begin with, there was never a every time I try to talk to Heno, I get this. Right. No, you never try to talk to me. Right. They just assume you've that never you're even, hot. <laughs> you've never even bothered. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm yeah. – I'm, I will – and I'm not going to hold it against him. At, at least, you know, it's I have to accept people for who they are. Mm-hmm. But this is number two. And what's really hard is that he's a liar. 
yeah. I've caught him in just flat out lies before. Like, you know, the person that just lies where they have no reason to. Yeah. At all. Yeah. And you're like, okay, you, you know, like, oh no, I got in at nine. It's like, no, you're here at nine thirty or eight thirty. Like, right. you have no reason to lie about it, right. but they just for some reason decide to. It it's been like that, and and it 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 makes it difficult for me to be. I mean, I I have to. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I I will never disrespect him ever, and I and I have to treat him with compassion and understand, you know, accept him for who he is, but. It, I don't when 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 people are deceitful and blatantly so that's I, I have it's a harder tough. time with that. Sure. Absolutely. It makes you know, sense but, because, you know, a lot of times it's hard not to go, well, what else are they lying about? Or, you know, to let it, like you said, to fully tarnish your your thought process of them. So and then they won't come and talk yeah. to me directly about anything. Yeah. It the whole well, thing is like, OK, y- y- I clearly there is a, I am, I'm intimidating. Yeah. I, I have to own that. Yeah. I have a part in this. Mm-hmm. So I'm clearly intimidating to this person. Yeah. And I don't know what to do. I, you know, I'll do, uh, I'll take the steps to try to mitigate it. And that's so hard because I, I used to get the same thing. I used to get told that, uh, new people that were hired, found me unapproachable, which, you know, I was always like, why? Like, I, you know, I'm all about, you know, hey, let's get our work done, but let's have a good time while we're doing it and all this other stuff. But what it comes down to is I don't tolerate um, what, you know, I don't tolerate nonsense as far as like, like you were just saying, like if someone's pulling that stuff, I call people on it. I talk to them about it. I was never one to really like gossip or how I'll just take it right to you if I have a problem with you, because that's how I want people to treat me. You know, I'd I'd much rather you just come to me, look me square in the eye and say, I don't like you. I'd be like, cool. I know where we stand, (laughs) you know, then pretend you like me and then hear from everybody else that you're running me down behind my back. So, but anyway, and I was tough, you know, I expected people to do their job. So a lot of people saw that as me being mean or unapproachable or whatever. And I was like, well, here's the thing. I'm here to do a job. I'm not here to, you know, be your friend. And it's like, I want us to get along, but I also, I have a job to do. I'm the man, you know, I'm the one running the shift. It's my responsibility. And I'm the one who's going to catch the flack if something's not right. So I, you know, I want everything done right. And, but so it's difficult because in my head, I'm like, I'm just doing what needs to be done. But to somebody else, they're, well, that's mean. But then other people are like, you know, coming to your defense and they're like, oh, my God, he couldn't be nicer. He always this. He's understanding. You know, it's like so it, it's really tough sometimes. But what you end up learning and like you were just saying is you kind of have to go, OK, each person I talk to has to be treated as an individual. Because yeah, and, I can't and, and, manage everybody the same. It just doesn't work that way. That's really bad management. Yeah. I didn't realize I was doing that. Like you said, then I go, oh, okay. And I start looking into what is it that they were saying and are there ways I can make myself seem less, you know, yeah. mean or whatever the the term was, you know. Or to be more approachable. And here's the yeah. part that the, the part about that that's interesting is he is treating me like every other authority figure that he's ever experienced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I know that. I I I see how he's been with every every situation where it's come down to someone in a position of authority. It's it's never d- deal with it directly. It's always avoid it. And it's a manipulation, I, is what it is. It's a manipulation to make everybody else look like the bad guy, the mean person, the hothead, the whatever. So that it sets you up to not be the bad guy. Hey, I just noticed whatever's going on. Heno went completely off on me. Yeah, it's, and and, you know, and the thing is that 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 it's whether it, he means it, to do it or not. That's yeah. what it is. You like know? I'm being asked to treat him like an individual and take his sensitivities into consideration. However, he is lumping me in yeah. with every other authority figure, and he's not 
looking at me based on our track record, which is I've literally never, (laughs) except for, I think only once I, I I can think of one time where I came down on him really, really hard. And it was because it was, it was a long, it was a long, long snow day and I needed help and I wasn't getting any help. And I ripped him one. Right. (laughs) But that was like, I don't know. six years ago <laughs> but you know but, some some people don't forget you know like and like you yeah, said it very well could be maybe so. that that was all he needed and now he <laughs> you know like you said though the best yeah. way you can best thing you can do like i my my story it's, it's same as yours is realize that you know and this goes for anybody is if you're not just in management but just in anything much like parents you can't parent two children exactly the same because they're not yeah. the same person you know we all have our idio syncrasies that make us you know more sensitive less sensitive whatever it ends up being so you have to look for those things and you know sometimes you have to adjust a little bit because like you said Heno, it's 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 important that you realize your role in things or what your potential role in things are you know uh the perception is important even if you yeah. don't agree with it, it's important because you don't know who, you know, maybe he's not alone. Maybe other people feel that way too, you know? And well, yeah. so mm-hmm. if you start looking at him as an individual and then you start maybe bringing that across the board, maybe it, you know, alleviates other situations before they happen. You know, so it, yeah, it can just be a good I'm policy. Gonna, I'm going to just continue to, to try to do everything I can to make it easier for him, whatever that is, but I can't make him be someone he's not. Right. So, I will keep reaching my hand out in the best way to say, hey, you know, come on over here. But if he doesn't want to reach back, then there's nothing I can do about that. And, and you know, there's it's. I I get if if somebody. Like one of my other coworkers, if somebody if she she doesn't like conflict at all, and if conflict happens, it it messes with her bad. And so, like, the last thing I would ever do is like. (laughs) bring conflict in yeah because i know that's how she is and and i you know i will do the same thing again it's like we're all we're all different we all get to have different relationships and yeah you know to try to do that and it's it's yeah it's it was another interesting day in that regard the good news is i'm uh i'm like i have a ton of paperwork that i need to do and i'm just leaving it and i'm getting out and i'm working And if someone says, what are you, what are you working on right now? It's, I'm just, you know, I'm literally, I'm spraying weeds. I'm cleaning the water feature. Yeah. (laughs) And it, cause it has to get done. Yeah. (laughs) Right. But anyhow, uh, overall though, from a, uh, yeah, bummer stuff happening, but overall, you know, good. Things are good right now. I feel there's good communication going on in, in in most avenues of my life and and I wish I was being a little more productive at home right now but you know that's the those phases happen yeah For that's sure. that's kind anyway, of where I've been yeah. recently is the like productive at home thing is <laughs> feeling that I'm not and you know cuz I I haven't really been you know cooking much I haven't been just it just various stuff I just haven't really been doing and I, I I think a lot of it with me is um, I can feel my anxiety and my situation with having agoraphobia kind of getting worse because of, you know, you, you turn on the TV and there's constantly, hey, there's this variant, vaccinated people are getting sick this is happening. Oh, now there's, you know, going to be a booster shot. And, you know, it's like all these things that, that just a month or so ago, we all were kind of like, you know, hot girl summers here. Woo. You know, and now it's kind of like, okay, maybe we stepped a little too soon. And I'm feeling, I can feel, I can feel thing. I can feel when you're out, you can feel things kind of tightening up with people. People aren't like when I've been out a few times, people seem to be carrying the stress again that I think it kind of felt like for a little bit there, people were kind of had kind of let go of some of that. And I, I, you can just see people staying clear a little more, you know, keeping more distance than they were before, stuff like that. 
And I feel that way too. It's like, I don't want to go anywhere, you know, and it sucks because it's such a fight in my head because there's that balance of taking necessary precautions, being safe, but then there's also that other line of, I know my brain's lying to me and all it wants me to do is stay home, you know, and I have to keep fighting that. And unfortunately I, I had to reschedule my therapy last week. So, you know, that's not for about a month, you know? So, I mean, I could, I might be able to call in, move it up or something, but you know, it, it doesn't help. It was one of those times where therapy was probably landing right where I needed it. <laughs> and because of other circumstances, I had to reschedule and, uh, you know, it, it gets, it, it, it's interesting how, when you feel you really need therapy, you really need therapy, you know, like you, mm. you know, you need that whatever, but I, you know, I've talked with people online and I've, I've talked with some people on Twitter that I know that are, you know, doctors about what's going on a little bit and kind of getting, finding out what they're hearing, stuff like that, that helps, um, you know, that kind of stuff, but it's, it's still a really tough fight. It's a hard fight for me on a daily basis without a dang, uh, uh, pandemic on top of it, you know, like it's, it's tough. Um, so yeah, I, I've been doing what I can with that, but I've really, really been noticing how I haven't been out of the house much over the last week and it's not bothering me, you know, usually before I'd hit kind of a point where I'm like, okay, I need to get out for a little bit and I'm not really hitting that point, you know, and that's not good. You know, that, that's a bad sign for me because that usually means I'm getting more and more, you know, I'm getting too comfortable with staying inside. So it's something I have to actively try to do. And the thing is that like walking down to the mailbox doesn't help, you know, or going for a walk around the neighborhood that doesn't help. I need to be out for like a little while, you know, to really push myself into being uncomfortable a little bit. So that I can, you know, see that I'm okay, see that things are whatever, you know. And on top of all this, you know, it didn't help that I found out a few days ago that um, my one nephew, um, he tested positive for COVID. And uh, he, my sister wasn't directly around him, but her grandson was. And then she had him for the weekend, you know, so there's like potential exposure there. Mm -hmm. And then she was at, in our house. And now I know that's a couple rings out, you know, but that's still like, whoa, that's close, you know. And also, of course, you know, I'm worried about, you know, my family, obviously, because, you know, this isn't something to you know, that goes lightly and, uh, you know, with some people. So hopefully everything will be okay, but it's still, you know, being that close, it's stressful no matter what, you know, I'm sure like, you you know, for you, Heno, I'm sure it was probably a little bit stressful until you got that negative test. Right. Oh yeah. Cause I also was like, you know? like all of a sudden it was like, Oh, I don't feel really good. Oh, oh I'm of course. Feeling a little congested. Yeah. Of course. Right. I'm like, is it psychosomatic? Did I just talk myself into it? <laughs> <Yeah>. So yeah. <laughs> so now I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's like it can mess with your head that way and stuff. So it's yeah. that's the other thing is like since she was over here, I've kind of been like, well, you know, it's probably a good thing I'm not really going out right now. Just in the event that, you know, if she did have it or was carrying it that, you know, because I don't I, I have not gone into I, I like the protocol for someone who's like i'm i'm what two two steps away from the 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 person who's tested positive you know well three actually i guess because there'd be my yeah so you know it's it's one of those that we all feel fine we've all been vaccinated you know and there's nothing you can really do, but it's also one of those that it's like, if I could potentially have something and carry it, I don't want to be that person either. You know, like I don't want to go out to yeah. the grocery store or something. If there's a chance I could be carrying this. Now I know that chance is there no matter what, 
because you don't know who if you go anywhere you don't know who's got what and you've been exposed to or whatever because you know a lot of people don't know until it's too late you know like had my had my nephew known he there's no way he would have you know had my uh other nephew at his place because he's immunocompromised you know so he didn't know until after and that's un- that's the worst part of this whole thing is you know you don't know he thought he had a or he had been fighting like a sinus infection but he had other symptoms that weren't quite sinus infection symptoms and then he got tested and found out that he's got you know that he he tested positive mm-hmm. so you know it's it's a tough scenario you know like i said you're worried about it in the meantime hope everybody's okay and all that kind of stuff is all you can do but it doesn't help you know when and i and i also will say i haven't been watching the news as much because it has an element of i don't want to sound dismissive but it has a real chicken little element to it now almost Mm -hmm. every story on the news feels like you're being told the sky is falling and then it's like the next day you're kind of, or you read into it because it all feels like clickbait, you know, and when you read into a lot of these stories and you go, Oh, okay. It's actually this, but the way they worded it incites panic versus if they could just present it, here's the actual thing. It's not as, you know, like it's still dangerous. It's, it's mm-hmm. not a good scenario, but it's not like, you don't have to run around screaming with your hands in the air, you know, like it's, it's not panic time to some extent for some of it. You know, obviously I know certain areas, you know, like the area me and Jen are in, the numbers have been significantly rising here. Like, you know, um, so it's one of those where people in this area are going to need to start taking different precautions than we had. That's fine. But the way I've seen some of it portrayed was very much like, you know, the world is ending and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, you know, like there's still some, um, yeah. Anyway, all that stuff aside, um, things have been, uh, for the most part, fine. Um, you know, I've just been feeling really meh lately though. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, like I've said before on here, it, it, a lot of my stuff comes back to money. And I worry and like, it's weird because I've had a lot of debt and different stuff and, uh, you know, student loans hanging over my head and all this. And, you know, and then I read something the other day that, you know, there's, uh, was a Senator proposing, you know, a change to the bankruptcy laws to maybe let long-term, uh, student loan, you know, be able to be added to, uh, uh, bankruptcy dismissals and stuff like that. And I mean, as much as I would rather just see them flat out canceled, that would still at least give people an option, you know, like me, that it's like, there's so much in there that I'm never going to be able to repay that, Mm -hmm. you know, being able to discharge, even if it wasn't all of it, but any of it would help, you know? So stuff like that, it's kind of interesting looking at it, but also, you know, still feeling really stuck. And I think that's the overwhelming thing of everything. And the agoraphobia fights that the, the pandemic is fighting me on that. Um, other life circumstances, I'm just really feeling just stuck again, like kind of feeling option less, mm-hmm. even though I know, I know I have options, but it, you know, you just feel that way sometimes that you're really kind of in a corner. Um, so yeah, but I'm doing my best. That's all I can do. <laughs> Um, All anyone can do, right? You just got to put yeah. one foot in front of the other and just keep moving forward. Yep. Yep. Chop wood, carry water, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So real quick, Heno, uh, when you mentioned about the price increase for you know the flights and different stuff for Jamaica, my um, some of my siblings, what, a week or so ago, went to Tennessee and they stayed at, you know, like a cabin in the Smoky Mountains and all this kind of stuff. And um, they were going to book for the following year because they usually will do that. And the price on that jumped significantly because there were fires in that area too. So they're using some of that. They raised the prices to help kind of recovery stuff in the mm-hmm. area. But they noticed that everywhere they went, basically, 
and not just because of the overall inflation that's going on in the country, but they noticed there was a significant, like there's a, um, oh shoot, I can't think what they're called now. Uh, they're like those cars that, that go along like a zip line kind of thing in the air. <laughs> okay. I can't think of what they're uh, called now. Huh? Monorail? No, it's, man, I can't think of what they're called now. Shoot. Anyway, it's, but, um. Gondola? No, it's, yeah, it's just like those, you know, it's just like a, a thing that goes, like, they're way up in the sky kind of a thing, and you can get in them, and you get to look around, and you see all the. the like a sky trim. Yeah, and, um, they usually go on that, but the price on that is, like, tripled from last year. And they charge for kids now, and I guess in the past it was minimal or no charge for little kids. Now they charge for everybody. And, you know, it's so it it's an interesting thing in that they noticed even in, you know, just going there that prices on a lot of stuff went way up. And like I said, this is well above like the normal inflation that's going on on goods and services. This was, you know, the fire made a uh, made a huge difference and, and different stuff. Also, it didn't help that they went in peak season or or not peak, but, right. you know, they they didn't go in like winter when nobody usually really wants to go. <laughs> mm. So, right. Yeah. But yeah. So, you know, they, but yeah, they said the cabin next year, I forgot the difference, but it's a lot, you know, from this year to next year. So it's, um, you know, uh, looks like that's across the board on a lot of that stuff, which I understand. Cause you know, a lot of industries like, you know, food set has said the same thing. Like restaurants have said the same thing that, you know, because of the amount of money they lost, they're raising prices to try to, you know, recoup a lot of that loss. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyways, I think, I think that's it for me. How about you, Jen? Well, um, things are slowing down, which is a good thing. Um, I did just dog sit, um, from last Tuesday to Monday of this week. So almost the entire week I was dog sitting, um, but, um, he did well. He blended real well with my family and, um, uh, by two dogs and stuff. And, um, yeah, it worked out well. Now I got to use the money to book a sitter for my dogs when I go to uh, <laughs> Kentucky, which is kind of ironic, but funny. Um, you know, Hey, it happens. Yep. So now I just got to figure that whole piece out. But, um, but yeah, something, it was kind of interesting because listening to what's going on with you, Hanno, um, work is just really frustrating right now. Um, just because basically part of my job is to, um, manage the payment of, of accounts. And I am not an accountant by any stretch of the imagination, nor would I ever want to be. But this has been put onto my plate, <laughs> and so I am now responsible to going out and getting people to pay their bills um, internally. It's all internally paying the bills that are coming into us that they are responsible for paying. When I have no authority to get them to pay these bills, <laughs> I've got to find a way to get them to pay them. Oh, jeez. Uh-huh. So uh, that doesn't make any sense, you know, like oh, and they're not even in my office. So I can't even like go stand at their desk and go pay your bills and stare at them. Right. I can't, I can't even do that because they're not even Jeez. like they're States away. Wow. That That is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so the good news is I was able to get, um, the majority of them paid, um, through, you know, perseverance and, you know, a bunch of emails and, you know, negotiating and all sorts of little tricks, anything I could think of to get them to pay their bills. But they did take care of them. I am sure that, that there has been pressure put on from other people other than me mm -hmm. because my pressure ain't worth nothing. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure... Their managers and their managers' managers have put some pressure on them. 
Um, so that's going going better, but it has been very stressful trying to figure out how this is all going to work. Um, including, as we discovered through this whole process, that um, Canadian dollar invoices cannot be paid through our new payment system that we have set up that everything got moved to in July. Um, all the Canadian invoices that I've been submitting have been getting paid in USD dollars, United States dollars, and there is an exchange rate. So all of those invoices are all messed up. And then I went right. and I had to... That makes no sense because of all the dang ways that the place gets paid. How did you not, like not you, but that, how right. when you're testing this, do you not consider that from Canada? Uh -huh. It's not like somewhere across the world where you might have forgotten it. It's literally <laughs> like, why would you not think about the conversion rates of a country that's right next to us? <laughs> yeah. And Jeez. no one thought to mention it to the person that's paying the invoices, me, that you cannot pay Canadian invoices through the new system. No one thought to tell me this. So. Then they told me to do it one way, so I went and I did it that way. Well, that was not the right way to do it. <laughs> that person was mis misunderstood. So I had to then bring everybody into a meeting and sit down with them and say, okay, how are we doing this? Yeah. So we then were able to hammer out this, you know, this whole thing. All of this is going on. I am trying not to lose my ever flipping mind, trying to figure out how I'm doing this, getting misinformation left and right. And, you know, this isn't my invoice. This belongs to so-and-so. I don't know who this belongs to. Oh, this must be wrong. You need to dispute this. All of this junk is going on at the same time. I'm still having to worry about billing. And then the railroad, one of my railroads is basically changing the rules with everything I bill. So everything I bill is incorrect. Jeez. Because they're moving, basically moving the needle. <laughs> they're just changing things as they go. And I'll call, I'll shoot them an email. I don't get a response. I give them a call. They tell me it needs to be somebody else. So I send it to the next person and they say, that's not them. And I say, oh, who should I go to? And they said, I don't know. Why don't you give them a call? So I give them a call and they say, no, it needs to go to so-and-so. I'm like, okay, I will call so-and-so. And it turns out the person responsible is the same person I was told to leave off from the very beginning. <laughs> well, my car is sitting for three days. I have two cars sitting for over a month Ooh. because the two railroads won't talk to each other. <laughs> no, wow. they insist on having me as the middle person. Oh, my goodness. What are they, five? I mean, jeez. Yep. Oh, yeah. One tells me it's not my fault. It's so-and-so. It's the other railroad's fault. I call the other railroad. They're like, no, we already did this. This is their fault. No, it's even it. So I do that for a week. And it turns out that it's not even in the same spot that it was supposed to be in. Because the railroad had it set in a different city than what it said it was in. So nobody knew it wasn't even in the city that they were arguing about. So wow. I, the entire time I'm trying to figure out, so I, I am flipping out. I mean, I'm at the point I'm going to like hit my head against the desk. In fact, I learned, leaned over to my manager and said, if you hear a sound, it's probably my head hitting the desk. <laughs> Don't mind me. I just can't do this anymore. I can't take it. Jeez. And, you know, she's like, what? Well, you just can't let it get to you. You can't, you know? And so she's trying to talk me off the ledge. And that whole, when I know you were talking about the whole, you know, passionate versus hot headed. I've been very passionate in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just trying, oh, wow. trying to not be as passionate and I'm trying to hold it together it's much easier via email because email I can, you know, craft 
Um, right. You can delete, yeah. you can wait a minute before you send it. Yeah. It's harder to do yes. that when the words are already out of your mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I was talking with one of the uh, the reps for our account for the railroad that's been holding on to the cars for two months now, or for a month now, and he was explaining to me why it was not his railroad's fault. It was the other railroad's fault. And I very politely said, I can't do this anymore. He's like, oh, you can yell at me. You can, you know, whatever. But this is the facts. I'm like, no, I, I seriously, I, I cannot do this anymore. Please do what you can to help me get my cars moving. Tell me what I need yeah. to do. Like, I don't care if it's your fault or not. If there's something you can do to help me, please, let's just do this. Like, at this point, we just need these to be moving again. Yeah. And that's and that's where we left it. He's like, "Okay, let me work on this and I'll I'll let yeah. you know." I'm like, "Great. Thank you very much." That's that yeah. realistically what you just described, I think is most people with politics. Yeah. Is we're tired of hearing that it's not your fault, it's the other person's fault. We want solutions. Just get it done. We need yeah, work. Do some work. Help us, you know. And that's so my manager kind of heard and I told my manager, and she's like, "Yeah, she's like you really got to work on being less passionate." And less emotional about these things and just kind of a little, little cooler in the head. And I'm like, I know. And she's like, I get it. I understand why you're so frustrated. And I'm not saying that's not justified, but well, you just got your job is to keep those trains moving, right? Yep. Yeah. You can't do your job. So how are you not supposed to, you know, how are you supposed to just be like, oh, well, you know, like that doesn't make any sense. I get what she's saying. But also, it's like, I can't do anything. <laughs> but that's the working with the railroads. Yeah. And it's, I mean, and, and anyone who is shipping, like the people that I report to, yeah. understand that this is the railroads. Yeah. Like, they don't hold me personally responsible. If I wasn't trying, they would. But as long as I'm showing that I'm trying and I'm working at it, they're not going to hold me responsible for right. not moving these cars in this particular yeah. reason, you know, and because Even, there's not an option like against the railroads, the railroads are not inclined to change policy. No. Yeah. Whereas if there was something new that would take the money away from them, they would probably change their tune, but there's yeah. not, and so. there is no other options. Yeah, exactly. So if, if a railroad is a junk railroad and they're not treating you right, you, you have no competition. Right. You can't just go to another railroad. Right, exactly. Because they own individual lines. Yeah. So, yeah, you're stuck. They have you held comp uh, captive. Yeah. So if you want to move your material via rail and you're moving it from point A to point B, you were working with that particular railroad that owns the rail between point A and point B, period. Yeah. So there is no other options. Jeez. So, yep. Yeah. And it is a nightmare sometimes. <laughs> I do love the rail, and I stand beside that. I really do love working with the rail the majority of the time. It's my favorite mode of transportation that I've worked with. But, yeah. So it's really been a, a lesson in not letting myself get overwhelmed in, with frustration mm. in letting things go and just doing what I can with what I can and just letting the rest out. Yeah. It's, it's been tough and I'm, it's not an easy lesson. It's something that I've been working on for years and you know, that's, that's all I can do. Yeah. So I've been, uh, yeah, so that's been kind of what I've been working through. The good news is we are going into our slow time. So, um, yeah, so the evening stuff and the weekend stuff has not, has not been as, as much as it has been in the past. We are going to be having a absolute stellar, um, harvest this year. So, um, I guarantee you guys are going to hear me flipping out probably in September and November, <laughs> um, as things are going to go through the roof. Um, but, uh, so I'm getting prepared for that as much as I can be. Um, but yeah, so things are, are slowing down. Things are getting back to normal in my household. Um, my husband works for an automotive industry. 
for the automotive industry, and they are back to work. Most of the plants are now, which is nice. They had a shutdown for a while. Um, so I am not going to as many meetings as I was going to, which is a good thing. Um, it was overwhelming. Now I'm starting to not be as overwhelmed by having something every single night going right. on. So, yeah, you probably leaned into it probably a little too hard, but you know, which is not, not unexpected. Right. I mean, that is my, exactly. you know, that is yep. what I do. <laughs> yeah. So. But, but, but that's okay though. You know, there's, you know, there's, yeah. Now let me ask you, since you like, do, do you notice, um, do you notice like your urges for, for that are higher without going to the meetings? No. Um, I honestly, I think it's pretty much gone for my system, Okay, but, um, not to say that it doesn't come back. Right. Right. Much like we've talked before about like going to therapy is that Mm -hmm. the, the time, you know, that you should go to therapy is when you don't feel you need to go to therapy (laughs) usually. So, yeah. Yeah, I hardly have any urges whatsoever or even think about it. Good. So whether it was, you know, whatever triggered it, yeah, you know, bipolar, mania, um, you know, boredom, I whatever it was that triggered it and got it going, um, stopping cold turkey has been doing really well and um yeah, the I, I locked my phone, so that really helped. I think I told you guys about that, didn't I? I don't remember there's if a, it or not. There's an app that you can get that um, will block over 5,000 gambling sites oh. and gambling ads. And uh, That's pretty much. awesome. I didn't any, know that existed. Wow. Oh, yeah. Cool. And once you do, it, you have to go through a bunch of. Um, a, a bunch of legalese and all this other stuff because what it does is it'll shut your phone off. Oh wow! So the the if you try to go to one of the gambling apps that is blocked, yeah, your phone will power down. <laughs> okay. Wow. And if you try to power up, it like will significantly affect your battery and could like mess your phone up. Oh wow, that's a little extreme, but okay. <laughs> I I like the initial part of it at least the the idea that there could be something to really help because like you said the one of the times you slid back was because you got an email you know and mm-hmm. like I was talking before we started this like I've seen so many ads on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram for these different sports books and stuff and it's I don't even have any want to gamble and I'm like geez this is enough you know like this is a lot so mm-hmm. you know. They're going out of their way to make sure everybody knows it's real easy to do this, you know, so. I mean, they've called me, they've emailed me, they, you know, they're on my Facebook page. Wait, wait, wait. They've, they've called you? Uh-huh. Like to say, hey, we noticed you haven't been gambling. Could you please come back? We didn't get that far. Good. We got as far as, hi, is this Jen? Yeah. And this is such and such site. We're wow. calling to say, and I'm like, don't, and I hung up. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's way more aggressive. Like the, the, the emails and texts I get, cause you know, usually when you sign up for whatever, yeah. you know, you could not realize you, you also agreed to that, but wow. Phone calls is aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just want any, I'm like, hang up. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. That's wild. Well, no wonder like, why so many people get addicted to this though. You know, it's like, good Lord, they go that far. Man. Oh, they've given me they you know emails free money. Oh, of um, course. Yeah, yeah, you know. to get you back, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they they you like know, the I most... don't even have to like match deposit. They're like, "No, we'll just give you money. Wow. We have put money in your account. Just come play." Wow. Yeah, cuz like I the most I've ever done is like I I do like DraftKings sometimes through the football season, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh like you know, during the whole off season, I'll get messages from, Hey, come back. We're, we're giving you this, this event for free or whatever. So I, I know what you're saying. And it's like, you know, and a lot of times they'll, you know, Oh, we'll put 10 bucks in your account or five bucks or whatever it is, you know? And it's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> so geez. Yeah. 
So they they are heavy handed and aggressive for sure. I guess so. Um, wow. But my yeah my I'm I'm doing I'm doing really good. Um, and I've cut back on the lithium. Um, talked to my doctor about that. It was starting to have some negative side effects to it. So I'm like, this is no, this is not working. Yeah. So um so we cut back. Um, and that's going pretty well. Um. I'm off the Abilify, which Abilify uh, has sometimes um, can increase the um, the center of your brain that controls the gambling. Oh, um, okay. They, like urges and stuff like oh, that? Urges and yeah. stuff, yeah. Okay. Um, so he took me off that. Um, so, yeah. So the things are things are going going pretty good in that, in that arena. And it's kind of cool to see some positive effects that are coming from mean stopping, which is very cool to see. Good, Yeah. That definitely helps when you start seeing positive reinforcement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm not as stressed. I'm not as, um, not constantly thinking, you know, and planning and scheming and manipulating in my head and stuff. And, you know, trying to remember what I've said with who and all this other just, Yep. Communication with my with loved ones and everybody has just gotten better. So yeah. It it's just it was the right decision to be made and um yeah. And so yeah, so good. far so good. Good. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, do you guys want to go on to a topic tonight? Or I know we're way over an hour probably already, aren't Not we? really. We're at an hour six. So I mean we're oh, we're, we're just right an over hour. an hour, yeah. So do we want to cut it and save it for next time, or do you guys want to continue on? I'm good either way, whichever. I'd like to give the topic a good do, and I feel like we've already... We're good? All right. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. See, folks, what you don't know is that Heno is a few hours behind us, and Brian is a notorious night owl. I am not. And it is. Well, this is why I'm bringing this up because <laughs> <laughs> we suddenly get the Jen nods. <laughs> yeah, They're not quite like the Tony nods. If you ever listen to, They're Salty pretty language. similar. Pretty similar, though. I've They're experienced both. Similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My tells, uh, for those that are curious, one of my tells is my head goes to the right. Uh, because I had an injury um, to my neck. I had a whiplash on my left side of my body. And uh, whenever I start getting tired and stuff, the muscles, um, give me, they start bothering me. So I need to stretch them. So my head will start falling to the right more than the left. Uh, so that's usually the first sign of, of <laughs> sleepy Jen. Um, the, the, and, the, the eyelids do also... Yeah. Yeah. Dim a little. The way I usually notice, (laughs) and unfortunately for those not watching, you won't be able to tell this as much, but Jen will sit pretty straight up. And then (laughs) if she's getting tired, it almost looks like she's melting. (laughs) (laughs) Because she'll go from being nice and straight up, and then it's just, (laughs) you can tell her neck disappears. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness, that's funny. Yeah. Dan, where's your neck? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so if we can still see your neck, we we know she's usually still awake. <laughs> yes. No, my eyes do get really sore and tired, so I do close them a lot. They start getting heavy, and I start yeah. closing them more and more frequently in longer periods of time. <laughs> right. <laughs> The so ba- yeah, the, the the guys have literally seen me fall asleep so yeah. multiple times. Yep. <laughs> so, thankfully, I've never really snored on the podcast that I know of. Yeah, so. yeah. Be real easy for me to just pipe something in there, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yeah, I don't have any incriminating evidence on my phone from you snoring in the past, so you know I can't <laughs> can't do that. But I'm sure I can find some just snoring clips. <laughs> So, supposedly when i when i'm sleeping fairly good i sleep very sh- i breathe very shallow mm. and very rapidly so it could make quite an interesting sound 
<laughs> but especially over a microphone. Yeah. It's like, what the heck is she doing? Yeah. But all right, enough about me sleeping. All right, <laughs> folks. So we've covered a bunch of stuff uh, this episode. Uh, just getting caught up and all that good jazz. But I know you have some questions that you would like to share with us. Um, some comments, some positive crit critiques, anything that you'd like to share, you know what to do. You can reach us at thecrazylifepodcast.weebly.com, thecrazylifepodcast at outlook.com, or if you would like to reach out to me direct, you are welcome to reach out to me on the Twitters at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. And Hanno, how can they reach you? As, as I unmute for the dog. Hey, Ben, don't need your help. <laughs> hey. By the way, stinky dog, skunked dog isn't, is that kind of went away. Bathroom eventually faded. I think Sharon's car still smells. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Man. Yeah, lesson learned on that one. Yeah. But at least he's doing okay. <laughs> Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno, or you can just look for the, what am I again? The something. Oh, L L hummingbird. Yeah. That's the other thing you can search for. And you can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Heno Heiter. And I've been posting lots and lots of Benny photos lately. Cause he's just really uh -huh. freaking adorable. <laughs> and yes, he some is. wildflower stuff. And yeah, it's been fun. So check that out. And you can check out my other podcast, moving needle podcast, where we've recently posted some episodes on fun movies and boy that dog <laughs> what is he doing i i think he's just in bogart's grill <laughs> poor, bogart. <laughs> poor bogart's like dude leave me alone i was like whatever he's <laughs> saying he's you know he's really into it it's a <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! And uh, we're we're I think we're 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 going to be uh, podcasting this week with someone from across the pond, and we're going to be doing um, uh, a verses. And I think maybe Jeannie might be joining us. Oh, nice! Our oh, good nice. friend Jeannie. So that might be kind of fun. But cool. I will tell you more about that one next week. So nice. All right. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. You can find my other podcast on Twitter at salty underscore language or at saltylanguage.com. That show is not safe for work. It's just me and my best friend talking about whatever, you know, like things we've watched over the week or just what's going on. Like, uh, what did we talk about this week? Uh, Hard Mountain Dew. We talked about the Star Wars hotel that's going to be opening up and how crazily expensive it is. Um, we talked about... Um, marvel's what if the bad batch um yeah so it's just you know pop culture or just whatever we kind of consume for the week or whatever so if you're into that please give us a listen again it's not safe for work and you can find this show on twitter at the crazy life pod you can find us on facebook at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast uh we're part of the tangent bound network which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com so please check out the other shows over there and uh I said it on Salty Language, but I want to say it again on here. Congratulations to the guys over at the History of Bad Ideas for uh, the, I believe, last night recorded their 400th episode. So That's amazing. Yeah, kudos to that. Um, even though, you know, they're all terrible because none of them have included me. So <laughs> <laughs> they're I not did. terrible. They're just dead to you. Yeah. <laughs> they're still perfectly good. Eh, I don't know if I'd say that, but <laughs> well, they're just dead to you. Yeah, I kid, I kid. Go check them out. Um, and uh, yeah, as always, if you need help, please reach out. Uh, we've got some links in the show notes if you need some, or you know, just please find some help. Reach out to your doctors or uh, a friend or or something of that if you need some help. Uh, and also, please check on people. Make sure they're doing okay. You know, especially. Right now, as things are feeling a little uncertain for a lot of us again, you know, some of us might be dealing with more anxiety and, and uh, things along that line. And then, of course, 
please be kind to one another because once again, you know, if a lot of people have anxiety, we're all dealing with something right now. So please, please be nice to one another and, you know, help, help others when you can and just show that, you know, we're, we're not going the wrong way with empathy and, and, you know, care for, for our fellow person. Absolutely. With that, folks, go out there and have the best week you possibly can. And don't forget, wiggle those toes.